everyone, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be another vlog. There's only gonna be one vlog this month, thankfully. I am currently reading through King of Scars as part of my read along, as you guys know, for the past few months. I am only, I think, on chapter two, so I'm not very far in. I got a chance to read a little bit during my lunch break, but that was short because I had a doctor's appointment, so I like worked through my lunch. I just got done filming my two videos. I will catch up with you guys when I get a chance to read a little bit more. I don't know if I'll get a chance to tonight, just because it's not a super busy night for me, I don't think. But I do want to just kind of relax and chill out for a little bit because tomorrow is going to be busy with like editing a video and, and whatnot. So today's going to be a nice relaxing, put some laundry away, pay my car bill. Actually, I will, I'll talk about the book a little bit. Thankfully this time, we got a ch Lee decided to introduce a new character that didn't die in the first chapter. So far, I'm enjoying the book. It seems like Nikolai is going through a tough time right now, which makes me really sad but we will work through it. It seems like he and Zoya have a flirtation going on, which I'm okay with because like my husband and my wife, but, and by husband and wife, I mean that loosely because like they're probably 18 and I'm 23. Me adore, I, I say husband and wife, like I just adore them to tears and I love them and we stand. Not like I would actually marry an 18, 19 year old. But I will update you guys if I get a chance to read a little bit more. Yeah, other than that, that's it. I need to drink more water. In my, I went back to work today and at my office we got rid of our water tank so that way, you know, like we don't accidentally contaminate each other and we don't have like people who are not working in the office coming in and like to exchange that. But I didn't drink a lot of water today because I did not know that. So I'm very parched and I was just standing in front of hot lights for like a good maybe 40 minutes, an hour talking and my throat is hurting. So. I'll update you guys when I get more water and when I read a bit more. Hello, it is now Tuesday. I'm currently editing a video right now. It's my favorite animes list. I don't know why in the video says my favorite animes of all time when it's I still have a lot more to go through, but it's my favorite animes video that I'm putting out. Today was a pretty chill day. I just went to work. I was supposed to go to Walmart to get my prescription and get my Mother's Day present, and then get some color stripper, I believe, because my sister's gonna be redoing my blonde in a couple days, and I have to order from Sally's, get that picked up, and then we can go from there. But I did get a chance to read a bit more of the book, yes, this today at lunch. I'm definitely enjoying it. We finally got to meet Nina, and I'm so heartbroken over Nina and like her whole pain with Matthias. I think that given what's going on and her being to like able to hear his voice and like get pulled by the dead because of what she ha what she went through with the Judah Purim, Jerda, the Jerda Parem, is an interesting plot twist in addition to her character. I also love that we're that Audric's all grown up, and that there's Nadia and Tolia and Tamar and David and Genya, and it's like a nice little like kit, like throwback to the original Grishaverse trilogy without it being a throwback, and I love it so much. It makes me so happy to see it, and I'm really excited to keep reading. Although I am starting to see what people are, are meaning by. Um, I'm only a couple chapters in, so I can't really like speak to the rest of the book. But so far, there's not a lot of Nikolai, so that's why I'm a little bit concerned because this is all about Nikolai, and somehow there is none of Nikolai at the current moment. Like we have his point of view, we've seen it a couple times, but I think right now it's just kind of laying the groundwork for what's going to happen and for in the rest of the book and in the second book. But yeah, I will update you guys when I get a chance to read a little bit more. I'm also editing, so I probably won't be able to read a ton tonight. I'm hoping to though, but we will see. I'm, I've been on, like I, like I said in my video, I've been on an anime kick. So if I typically, if I'm not writing, I'm ending my night watching an anime. And right now I'm re-watching Free to catch up. Because I only watched up to the second season before I stopped. So I'm watching that and then we can go from there. I also got my sister back into anime. She's talking about re-watching Free. And she's re-watching her favorite anime, which is Inu X Boku. So I'm just like... Also, when I mean redoing my hair, we are gonna go lighter. Um, I sent my sister like a little graphic of like some of the like the kind of like tones that I wanted, and I think she's going with the lightest ones. So I'll send a little like thing here. We're gonna be we're using like really good quality bleach this time, so my hair will not. Well, my hair didn't fall off, but you guys don't have. But this time it'll be a little you know less scary for my for my hair. Granted, my hair is actually pretty healthy right now. Like, I'm going through the normal shedding phases, like the weather warming up, and my ends are dry, but they were dry before I bleached my hair, so it's not a surprise to me. 
But yeah, I just need to make sure that I hair mask the shit out of this thing after we go through in blonde because like my roots are already growing out. So Maple. Hey. Honey. Maple. Look at this dog. Maple. Hey. Hey, I'm behind you. Look at me. Hey. Hey. Maple. 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 Maple, maple, maple at the, at the maple, 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 hey, knock knock, is anybody in there? Maple, maple, hey, is anybody in there? Maple, hey. <laughs> Hello, it is now Thursday. I didn't vlog yesterday, primarily because there were some things that happened that I will probably explain tomorrow, once I potentially hear back, that I just needed to take a break and I was like, I can't do anything. And then my video, I was editing my favorite animes video and I added some clips of like the TV show in there and then like some a little bit of the soundtrack for like like a little bit and it picked up on one of them like youtube and it blocked it from being published and i was like well i'm gonna call my losses and delete the video so that's why there was no video but i did get a chance to read more of king of scars i am about 41 percent of the way through i believe i'm enjoying it it's really interesting i like how cut i like the callbacks to the first original Grisha trilogy in terms of like the Darkling and Alina and then like Nikolai trying to be something that he wants to be for his country and like developing him a bit more. I really enjoyed that aspect. I also like that there are occasional callbacks to Six of Crows. He does mention Kaz Brecker and then we get to see more of Nina as well and develop her character. I think it's interesting because these characters that we didn't get a lot of development on throughout the Grishaverse, like the original trilogy, we get we're getting a lot now, and I'm definitely enjoying that. I think it's interesting to see how she's taking these very minor characters and making them stronger and developing their personalities and their livelihood and their backstories. And I like that we're seeing that, especially since Zoya, Tolia, and Tamar, I believe, are POC. So, yay! I've reached the point where it's it's like I don't dislike the Darkling, but I don't like what he did to Nikolai. If that makes sense. But it's like the perfect punishment for Nikolai, who's like, the, he mentions it in the book, who's like all about control and like wanting to have control over his thoughts and his actions and all of a sudden he loses all of that and he's hurting people that he cares about and it's taking a toll on him as a leader, but eh, eh, all this stuff. I like that. I like the budding relationship between Zoya and Nikolai. It's very subtle, but it's like a slow burn kind of like, I respect you, but I'm also attracted to you situation. And I like that she's building that up because I was shipping them toward the end of Crooked, of not Crooked Kingdom, of Ruin and Rising. So it's nice to see that kind of happen. And it doesn't feel like a fan service in any way. It feels like Shh, Lee Bardugo uh, decided to kind of give us that, to build it up in a natural way. Their friends, or who, they're, they're working together who slowly became friends who are now starting to fall for each other. And I like that there's some bit of like, that they're both struggling with something and it's some that they can't really help each other out with but they're doing so as like friends if that makes sense like they're not helping each other heal they're not the main cause for the other person's healing but they're helping each other get through it and being like a pillar of support which i really enjoy the one thing that currently i'm not a fan of is like i'm i'm religious i'm not super religious but there are some instances where it feels like tolia and tamar's because they still don't have a pov like they don't have a point of view but it feels like sometimes that Toya and Tamar's, what do you call it? Toya and Tamar's faith is kind of, it feels like a butt of a joke almost. Because like no one else in the book is very religious with these two characters. And sometimes when it gets brought up, you can like really just sense the disdain and the dislike. And I'd like for there to be a moment, like Nikolai sort of mentions it in passing that he respects it. But sometimes he doesn't like the fact that they bring it up so often. So I like a moment where like, we may maybe get like an explanation to their overly religious aspect and like maybe Nikolai kind of like finds a newfound respect for them or something because right now it feels like anytime it's brought up it they're like the butt of a joke because they're believing in something and it just it doesn't it doesn't sit right with me and I don't know if that's just because I am a little bit religious 
but it, I wish that it wasn't that way or wasn't written that way. I know that it, the point of it is to show that they are religious and like Nikolai's uncomfortable with it because he doesn't believe in it, but I would like to see something else in there to kind of explain that wh why they are the way that they are and like Nikolai emphasizing they are respecting them and like trying to fight like overcome this uncomfortable situation because he does respect them and like enjoy their presence in their company but other than that i haven't had a chance to read a bit more tonight's gonna be a semi busy night i have to cook dinner which i'm currently doing right now i need to work on a bujo spread because i i want to make another spread for um asian american asian american and pacific islander month like i did last year but center around filipino like i did last year I want to do that again and I've been struggling to figure out an idea and I think I figured it out now so I'm going to try to work on that in my bujo. But yeah, I will try to update you guys. I don't know if I'll be able to vlog me cooking just because like my kitchen counters are really small and this camera, like the angle that I have to put the camera in so you guys can see it, see me cooking, might accidentally have the camera falling into the sink or the floor or the pans. So, But I'll update you guys if I get any more reading done and I swear I'll be better at vlogging again. I don't know why. It's been such a struggle for me to like update you guys consistently when I like read and like have thoughts. But try and be better. I think it's just this new camera that's kind of making things difficult. I also think I have to start taking notes when I'm reading again. So I have like points to talk about. Hello, it is now Saturday about almost one-ish. I meant to vlog yesterday, but I got very caught up talking to my friend on Skype right after work. And then I watched Dead to Me until like 2 a.m which I finished the second season, so like, which like, highly recommend that show if you haven't seen it. It's about this woman whose like husband previously died and she meets another woman and it like turns her life upside down more so than it already has. It's like a comedy mystery thriller. Very good. Can I help you? Can you see him? You can see his tongue. I did get a chance to read more of King of Scars. I think I'm about 50% of the way through, so th probably this will be like a nice two-weekish long vlog. Not a two-week, like a week and a half long vlog, which is great because that means by the time that I'm done with the book, songbirds of s ballads of songbirds and snakes will be out by then and in my hands because it's not coming in until the 21st or 22nd? 21st. 21st. So that's life right now. So for the book i like it there's definitely some bits where like i feel like we definitely could use a bit more nikolai but i am um, we're gonna do well with what we have and that's bare minimum min nikolai content however i do like the fact that we are starting to dive into um zoya a bit more i think that her character has been fairly complex even from the beginning with the original trilogy so to see her talk about like her ptsd with the darkling as well as her conflicting emotions with nikolai and like see her kind of stand up for the like there's a scene in there because spoiler there's a monk that kind of wants the darkling to be a saint and Zoya is very vehemently against it, which like rightfully so. So he was talking about how like, I forgot exactly the, the context. He was talking about how like he should be like a saint because he was martyred and Zoya had stood up for her for like, had like said something and got really upset. And she had said that she was going to stand up for the women who didn't have a voice during this entire situation, which was herself, her aunt Liliana, who had died in one of the battles where she had used Alina to basically destroy the village. Alina and then Bagra. And Genya, I believe. Yeah, I think. Herself, Liliana, and yeah, yeah, five people. And she was like, I'm going to speak up for the women who never got a chance to speak up for it and show like how terrible he is. And like you can see like her trauma facing through that and the fact that she has to be around this guy who is like worshipping the person that ruined her life who like built her up and ruined her life and I think that's really interesting to like see that dynamic or like see that complex aspect about her and just have her be more fleshed out and see that she's like this general and she's very cruel at times and very harsh but she still has feelings and like has emotions clearly so I like that I like the fact that we're seeing also more of Nikolai in terms of like through the eyes of everyone else we're seeing Nikolai kind of like show the fact that he is this king and that everyone believes in him and he wants like his love is for his country unlike his previous like people and that's not always been the case so it's nice to see him kind of be fleshed out and shown that he is going to be a good king that he's making these acts sacrifices despite what his heart actually wants which is to potentially pursue something with Zoya and to maybe just like kind of wander at wander the world as a privateer because his love 
for his country is the first and foremost thing for him. Someone's being very needy right now. That's right. Come here. I will update you guys when I get a chance to do anything else. It, it, I think it's just going to be a lot of like me working on like bullet journal and like watching YouTube because I'm behind. That's Nothing new. I think I have two weeks worth of content to catch up on, which isn't terrible. So I'm going to try to get through with at least like maybe like a week and a half today maybe and then end my night playing video games but if i read anymore i'll let you guys know but i will have vlogging content because i've been sucking at that recently but it's fine So what have I gotten done today? Not a lot. Just went to the store, watched some YouTube. That's not YouTube right now, but that's something. That's a, that's the playlist. And I worked on bullet journal spreads. So this one is the. I still have to finish this one, but I don't know what to add to it. It's gonna be my spread for API month. I need to do something to it because it's very boring and very plain. I don't know what to do with it. So don't look at it. But I worked on my free spread. Look at them, my sweet little boys. And then I also got a chance to do the the spread that I wanted to make for the half of it. So there's that. And that's all I've done all, so far. But it's almost dinner time. I think my sister and I are going to be shoving my hair under the proverbial knife again. And I'm going to try to get some reading in. So, wish me luck. This is how bad Sherman doesn't like being manhandled. Did I release the tail? <laughs> do you see that? So, I need you to move your hand. Away <laughs> It's such a violent wag of the tail. No, you don't get to leave. <laughs> so it hasn't been that much long, like that why that far since I that long? That long since I updated you guys last time with my bullet journal. But I did start reading a little bit more of this. They were in the middle of a battle with a dragon. This is where I left off. And Zoya, being the badass that she is, takes on the dragon by herself and manages to hold it off before she passes out of exhaustion. Sadly, in the process, she broke her amplifier. But the biggest plot twist that I should have seen coming, but did not see coming, is that the saints are somehow real people. Now... I'm a bad Catholic if I if my brain somehow was like, yeah, saints, they're not real people, but the Catholic saints are real people, so. I don't know what I was thinking, but apparently one of the saints can turn into a dragon. His name is Saint Juris, or Sank Juris, however the heck you pronounce that weird Russian word. That's not really Russian. And then so is apparently Saint Elisabetta. And I'm just, I'm a little shook. I'm just, I'm very shook. And now we're jumping to chapter 16, which, who the hell is Isaac? Is this another character that's gonna die randomly? I just, why are we introducing him? I did <laughs> But I will update you guys in the to read more. I'm hoping to get a little past like 50% in this book, so I could probably finish it by Tuesday or Monday. Because I also have to finish reading um, the arc that I have, which is Court of Miracles by Hester Grant. 
it's interesting so far but also I'm, there was like a random time jump that was not very clear to me that i'm just sitting here like i don't but it's fine i'll let you guys know if i hi hello it is sunday afternoon um i didn't get a chance to do any more reading from what i did last night that i updated you guys on but i just wanted to pop in and say i did reach 500 and i just want <laughs> it makes me so happy but i'm very thankful to everyone that has been subscribing who has been subscribed for a long time who has recently subscribed and people who will be subscribing in the future honestly i would not have been continuing on with booktube if it wasn't for the people who commented who even like liked it and like just kept watching the video without a comment so I just am very grateful and thank you guys for helping me reach 500 I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do now that I have reached 500 whether or not I'm gonna do a giveaway or like another kind of fun Q&A situation or whatever I'll have to figure that out eventually but yeah I'm just really grateful that I got to 500 <laughs> and it's just I like keep opening up my studio app on my phone and just seeing like the, the number and I'm like I keep pan. I'm not like panicking, but I, it's it's a, it's a surreal thing because I started this like what three years this channel three ish years ago, without really thinking about like growing it. Really, I just wanted to do it, and then yeah. But that's all I wanted to say. Um, as you guys can tell, I am significantly blonder. Yeah, we bleached it twice last night, and then surprisingly, my hair is doing really well. It's like the ends are dry, but that's pretty much normal, and then. Once we're done, um, I believe we're toning it today and then we're putting in the brown so I'm not full blonde. Really, I look like Kenma from Haikyuu because I have pudding here. But I'll just throw up a picture of him here, but that's okay because he gets to spend time with Kuro and I love Kuro. As for reading, I, I mentioned it already, I haven't had a chance to read more of King of Scars since yesterday. I think the Isaac thing kind of threw me off with like the flow of the rest of the book. I was in the zone and then all of a sudden we jumped to a random character that I don't know in the middle of the book who has not even been mentioned up until now so I'm just like are you gonna die are you gonna stay alive I don't I don't know I did get a chance to read more of A Court of Miracles which is by Kester Grant not Hester Grant it's okay I know this vlog isn't about that but just putting that out there for sick kicks and giggles it's okay I'm 51% of the way through and I'm not particularly um excited about it it's supposed to be a like i've mentioned this a couple times already it's a historical fictional retelling of les mis with some six of crows vibes thrown in there there it, there are definitely some six of crows ish vibes but not a ton at least that's what it's like advertised as and i wish that books would stop saying that stuff just because sometimes when it's advertised and it's not what it is it, you, people tend to bog down the ratings so far it's just kind of meh I don't understand the world too much. I feel like there were a lot of time jumps that had happened between part one and two where things should have been explained and then all of a sudden our character was knowledgeable about the world and it was kind of foggy. So I'm not very attached to really any of the characters and I don't know. I, I think if it doesn't start looking up soon, it's probably going to be another three, which makes me sad because I think thus far all of my net galley receives have been like about a three star so i think it's time for me to start moving away from ya but i believe my next set of let's see where is it my next set of reads is the book of dragons which doesn't come out for a little bit and then night call and that doesn't those two come out in i think one comes out in july and the other one comes out in like late june and they're both adult books so i'm hoping that those guys were just be not because that they were necessarily YA, but hopefully that now that I'm going up into like more adult reads, it'll be a little less three star and maybe a little bit more five star because it's it's been a rough ride. <laughs> I think like what I hit maybe April, yeah, April, and all of a sudden all my books were like, yeah, we have a couple five stars, and now we're getting into the threes, and I'm sitting here like, you know, maybe I should really focus on the books that I need to read. That are on my physical tbr but we're not that smart so but i will update you guys if i get a chance to read more um i'm waiting for my video to upload it's my writing advice video it's, it's all nice and uploaded i just need to add cc to it and it's scheduled for like four o'clock so i have some time for the cc to like load itself so i'm watching youtube videos in the meantime i'm working on my next my next weekly spread 
and I think my sister is in the corner showing me boxes of hair dye so that might be her sit her way of telling me to get up off my camera so we can tone my hair and finish this up so I'll update you guys when I'm done I have my tamale and I have a hundred pages left in King of Scars. I also figured out who Isaac was. He was the guard that knew multiple languages, so focus, there we go. Here's hoping I can finish this today, which I should, because Biles of Songbirds comes tomorrow and I gotta prioritize. Look at them, they're so cute. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Alright, so it is now Wednesday, about 5-ish. One, well, I thought it was Thursday, so this is going super well for me. I also forgot how old I was, because my birthday is next month. And I had to calculate how old I was turning this morning, so that's that's been that. I am about 80% of the way through King of Scars now. They are about to do the ceremony where Nikolai is going to try to cleave the Darkling from his body. By the looks of things, I have a feeling the Darkling is going to be like revived somehow. It just all signs seem to point to it. I have a feeling that once they separate Nikolai from the Darkling, the Darkling is going to like come back or like possess someone else just because I feel like the only reason why the, the Darkling hasn't come back thus far is because Nikolai has a pretty strong resolve, I'd like to say. So he'll probably find a way to possess someone without a str strong resolve or someone who like adores him and like worships him. So I have a feeling that is what's going to happen. So it breaks my heart to see like Nikolai and Zoya like pine for each other, but in a sense where it's like Zoya doesn't really know what to do with her feelings because she's like, you know what? No, he's a man. I have better things to do with my life and to like like someone and he has to get married and that's the plan is to help, what do you call it? Is to help Ravka by having him marry. And Nikolai is like, I like her, I like her a lot. She's really good for this cunt for this country, my kingdom, but like I can't marry her because she's not like she's not royalty, but she's already a queen and I'm just like <laughs> And then we have our like our, our um, little interludes with Nina. And I love Nina, I do. I love the fact that she's kind of growing and we're seeing her develop a bit more outside of Matthias because that was my biggest problem in Six of Crows and King Crooked Kingdom was that her relationship with Matthias was kind of really defining her. And we see that her seniors start to break away from that a little bit. But also, I just, I, I love her to tears, but I also just don't understand her. Like, I feel like she's not progressing in a way that I can really, like, just relate to her as a person. If, is, does that make sense? Like, I don't hate her. I want her to be happy and loved and enjoy life. But also, I just can't relate myself to her. So it's a very difficult time for me right now. I also think that the bits with Isaac are also really cute. Just because he's this precious little bean who didn't really ask for anything. And now he's getting thrown into this mix and has to act like Nikolai because Nikolai is currently missing no one knows where Nikolai is and he's just like I was tailored to look, look like Nikolai more or less I am trying to act like him and it's not working because I'm a lowly lowly commoner 
I think the entire like how this book is formatted is really interesting. I do agree with people in the sense that for a book about Nikolai, there's not a lot of him in it, but like he has a fair bit. But I feel like it's just more or less everyone else trying to function. Like we have Zoya kind of looking at Nikolai and like observing him, Nikolai trying to struggle with this darkness within himself and trying to be a leader. Then we kind of have the rest of the world because Nina's not in. She's in Freydia? Freydia? The place where Matthias is from. She's there, so we don't see that. But for like Isaac, we see a lot of like the... Just kind of how Nikolai has kept the world, like Ravka, together. With like who he is as a person. Not so much as a leader because we see him like... They've mentioned it a lot where like Nikolai gets to know everyone. There's not a person in his like staff or his castle. He's not like sitting there asking like how are they doing? How's like your bum leg? How's like the children? Like hopefully like Rent's doing okay, that kind of stuff. And so we see him, we see Isaac, who's this, out, who's this outsider, really struggle with that because he's not um, Nikolai. He sees Nikolai from an outside perspective, but not to the point where he would necessarily be like able to take on the role because Nikolai is just this very unique kind of character. And I think that's kind of showing how Nikolai has really held Ravka together even before he was the king because he used to do this with his people when he was still the prince so I think it's really interesting to see that and I think it's just like this book about Nikolai is literally more so about Nikolai it's not like the actual like point of view but more so how like the world functions because Nikolai is at the helm and how he has kept his world alive if that makes sense and I'm really kind of enjoying it right now I think if Nina's part of the book doesn't come together with like the rest of the book it's probably going to be a four out of five stars I'd give it the five but I feel like Nina's parts just kind of stick out in the sense that I like the storyline I like where it's going I like that Nina is standing on her own without Matthias there without the backdrop of like Ketterdam and we're seeing her as this soldier who's trying to find who's trying to heal from a trauma of losing a loved one and like all that stuff but at the same time it's not cohesive with the plot. I can't see where Jarl Brum is going to come in. I feel like she, Lee just kind of brought in Nina just so we can have we can finish that Jurda Parem plotline that was in the first book, first and second book. But I don't see Nina coming in to like wrap up, not wrap up, but to tie in with the rest of the plot, which, which is very much like keep Ravka afloat, figure out what's going on with the Darkling. So I'm interested to see how it it's gonna wrap up in the last like hundred pages but at the same time if it doesn't wrap up and Nina doesn't get tied in somehow back into the main plot then it's gonna be a 4 or a 4.5 for me just because she sticks out quite a bit and I feel like if we if she wanted to she could have found a way to tie this in with the rest of the plot quite easily but right now it just sticks out on that there's also, we got a bit of Zoya's backstory, which wasn't explained in the, the original trilogy. And you can kind of see why she's so cold. She was um, basically emotionally neglected by her mother. And then was almost a child bride at the age of nine because her mother wanted the money. And she only saved herself because she showed her powers as a Grisha then and her, her aunt, who died in Obrovsky during the Darkling's attack in the first or second book I believe she um took her to Ravka to be trained with the king's army and Zoya kind of made a name for herself there and like built herself up so we can see kind of why the darkling hits her so terribly why she was really attached to her amplifier um why she's so cold and distant and loses her looks to her best abilities and why she loves her look so much but it's just adding like a layer to Zoya that I've been really wanting for a while now because I've always said that, that um, Zoya is a very complex character. We just never got to see it. I love the fact that she stands up for the women, even the people that she hated. Like she did not like Alina in the slightest, but she stands up for Alina even though she's not there. She stands up for Genya, for Bagra, for her aunt when they're not there because um, Yuri, who is this monk, is like worshiping the darkling thing he's his greatness and she's just like no he abused all these women he treated the grisha like crap and left us all to die and killed us off when we weren't listening to him anymore and i really like that she's literally being a voice for those who 
are not one available to voice themselves and then two quite literally the voiceless because they have passed away so I really like that layer to her and like I can see why Nikolai is like she's what we need for Ravka and it's just like what I've been waiting for this entire time because she I, I feel like she has become who Alina should have been or who I wanted Alina to be in the series so it's really nice to see that complexity and also that development but I will update you guys probably when I finish the book or if I have anything else worth to say I called it and I'm very, 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 very upset that I called it. I'm almost to the end and I think I need to lay down from the last like two chapters that just happened. I j what? What? I guess we know how Nina's gonna tie into this. What? So I just finished. I need to lay down. So much happened. I don't... I need to process. So I'll be back either later tonight. Or tomorrow. With my thoughts. But I... been like two days since I finished King of Scars I probably woke up an hour ago I stick with my statement that King of Scars should be a 4.5 out of 5 stars I think the writing's done really well Lee has definitely grown into more of a writing that she's comfortable with you can see that with how she's like writing characters and their development as well as like the how like they're talking and thinking each of them have pretty much separate ideas and their voices are very different from one another so you can tell who is who even probably without having the word Zoya or Nikolai or Nina or Isaac written at like the top of the chapter. I think that we got to see a lot more of the characters that I wish were had been developed in the books. So we got to see more of Genya, we got to see more of David in their relationship, more of Tolia and Tamar. Though I wish those two specifically were more front runners and not side characters if that makes sense. Like they had their own point of view because I think given their situation where they are strongly religious and then also serving Nikolai and not fitting in with their own people. The shoe, I think that would have been really interesting to have seen develop in this book. We get more of Nikolai and his thoughts, though I, st I agree with people saying that it's not a very like, for a Nikolai-centered book, there's not a lot of Nikolai in it. I think that's primarily because Nikolai is dealing with his own demons and to have that be kind of the forefront would, I feel, distract from everyone else and their attempt to help Nikolai create Ravka. So I think it's like a weird attempt of like creating the King of Scars without the King of Scars. I like that we got more Zoya's backstory and a lot more of Zoya's character development. I think that she was an interesting character from the get-go, from when we first meet her. She was just this normal, typical bitch, and then by the time the series ended, there were a lot of open, if that makes it, like open-ended situations where we could have seen more of her and her personality and her character and her backstory and her morals, and to have a point of view kind of open that up. 
and made it easy for us to understand why Zoya is the way that she is, why she values her looks, her strength, her power, and why the, the Darkling doing what he did kind of screwed with her. And I like the fact that she, as someone who um, first started out as hating Alina, became Alina's biggest advocate. I, I really enjoyed that and the fact that she didn't care much for Genya at first re and Bagra and all that stuff and she was very self-centered and just trying to finish what she started. She became some of their biggest advocates in the attempt of telling people, oh yeah, no, the Darkling shouldn't be worshipped. She became a voice for the women and the people who had died and lost their lives, and, like lost some autonomy because of the Darkling. And she's like, well, who's going to voice, who's going to be a voice for them? Who's going to stand up for them? Who's going to tell them, no, what you're doing is wrong. What the Darkling has done to people is not okay and it shouldn't have n never been okay. I really enjoyed that. I think that, like Haiki, that should have been Alina. Though I like the fact that we are seeing it from Genya's, from Genya, from Zoya's perspective because she has been with these people long enough. She was an outsider watching all of her friends and family die and all the things she cared about and worked toward just literally wither away. I also called it, she became a dragon. Very proud of her. Very, very proud of her. Though the reason why I'm giving it a 0.5 and not the full 5 is because of Nina. I love Nina, don't get me wrong. But I feel like Nina's storyline was very um, an outlier and not in the best way possible in comparison to the rest of the point of views because we get to see Isaac in the castle, Zoya with Nikolai, and then there's Nikolai himself. And then we have Nina who's in the frozen wastelands of Freyja? 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 Where Matthias is from. You could tell she's healing from this really bad trauma and she was kind of sent out here to heal and like bury Matthias and like also work on this pro this other mission that she, Adric, and Leonie are, going are doing. But it, it just felt like such a huge outlier because I would be into the heart of like the actual plot of the book and then we go to Nina who's doing her own little thing and I'm just trying to see how that connects with the rest of the plot in the book. And like you can kind of see where it's going to connect toward the end but at the same time Nina's become this kind of like rogues, this rogue soldier situation that I can't see how she can connect back into the story and still be true to her progression from this first book. Yeah, it was hard to see how she's going to connect, and even with the connection, because there's a new guy for trying to vie for the Lansov throne, and also it's all, with Nikolai's birth father, I believe, it's still difficult because she is such a rogue soldier at this point. She has her own thoughts of how to do things, and it's not very... Not, so like, uh, not her own thoughts, but she's been doing things how she wants to do them, and for the sake of a kind of revenge plot to help show the citizens that Grisha are not evil that I can't see how she's gonna come back and reconnect to the original plot and it feels like a weird way to like keep the Six of Crows vibes alive I can sense that Han and Nina are gonna be like a thing I can sense it deep in my bones but also I feel like it might be too soon to have introduced a new love interest for Nina not because I think that you know you can't move on right away but literally Nina brings up Matthias every five page, like every other page. And now we have this hinting that she's gonna be with Han in the next book and I'm just like, it might be too soon because she hasn't gotten over Matthias just quite yet. Or not even gotten over, but like tried to see that Matthias is no longer with them. And she's still on this very high kick of like, I'm gonna change this entire country to enjoy Grisha and it just feels a little like, and it doesn't wrap up into the story, and it's only a duology, so I don't know how this is going to go. Or if she's going to use Nina's story as a backboard to enter Six of Crows number three. Other than that, I really enjoyed it. I think Lee has become one of my favorite authors. I like the fact that she writes diversity fairly well. Like, it's not like, you know, 100% like oh my god, this is it for a white person to write diversity. But I think in terms of like writing POCs, it's definitely a step up from the first trilogy where it was just kind of a mess and a half with POCs. And then we get to see, then we get to see LGBT characters and they're done in a way where she didn't try to write like a coming out story. But I like that 
we are that she's kind of like I don't want to say set the standard, but she is showing how you can include diversity as a white white cis head person without having um, to actually include the stories that they should be writing. But yeah, that is it for this vlog. This should be going up tomorrow when you see it or Sunday by the time you see it. But I will um, catch up with you guys later. I have a couple things I need to do before um, that. So hit like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in uh, comments and everywhere else.